So it has come to my attention that there are a couple other people currently let's playing this game. Uh, that was... I didn't realize that. I'm, I, I'm sorry if you're watching one or both of those and now you have a third one to watch. I should have checked and I'm not entirely sure why I didn't. But I didn't. I watched Cypheron's LP of this a while ago and like shortly after watching that I considered this game sort of off limits because that one was considered like well done and I didn't think I should really do my own version of it. But then like later on I was just like eh screw it I'll do it anyway. And I haven't checked if anyone else has done it so yeah oh, this is way too loud. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I'm not trying to copy them. I haven't watched either of theirs. I don't really watch other people's stuff in general. I mean, I have a couple times. Like I said, I watch Cyphrons of this. But it's not a common occurrence, so... I don't know. I'm sure people are still going to say I'm a rip-off because, because, like, they're idiots and they f feel compelled to say things like that, but... Whatever. Long cutscene. I don't think it needed to really go that high into the air in order to strike the door a few yards away from it. It doesn't entirely make sense, like, how this is working anyway. Is there a series of satellites surrounding the planet that just reflect this beam or what? I mean, if it just bent around, it wouldn't technically make sense, but if, if it did bend around, I could accept that, but then why does it shoot in the air so high? I don't know, never mind. So yeah, you gotta do that to open every level. It's a rather time-consuming cutscene. I might start cutting it out later on, but I figured I should probably show at least the first one. And so, in we go to my hem temple. It follows the tradition of first levels being rather simple and just sort of like a grassy generic area but it does manage to have its own theme and like unique feel to it so it's cool uh first right off i'll just get the jinjo in the water if the game will let me it's deciding to be a jerk and lag and i want wow I wonder how much of the route I remember for speedrunning this. Because I don't know how many people know that about me, but I once attempted to speedrun this game. I actually had quite a bit of it finished. I never recorded any of it because I like, didn't have a, like VCR in my room or blank tapes or anything like that, and that's how you'd have to record it, I guess. But I planned it out at least. Eh. Yeah, I was hoping I could avoid this little talk there by like jumping over, but whatever. So yeah, this is the f Ugh. whatever introduction cuts in. I'll show it, I guess. So yeah, this is Battle's brother. He's really annoying, actually. Or at least his voice is annoying. So yeah, he teaches you moves, uh, they're saying that in far more words than they needed to. I shouldn't be insulting it, the dialogue is usually very good, but when I'm trying to play the game and hurry along and stuff, it's going to be kind of annoying. So yeah, he requires notes kind of arbitrarily. In the first game, notes were used for opening doors. This one, you just have to find them to get moves, and the requirements are not very steep. You will... I don't think I've ever had a time when I didn't have enough notes. And since they appear in nests instead of individually, they're a lot easier to gather than they were in the first game. So anyway, now that I have a game, I can shoot these snake statues to open up the door. So I might as well do that. 
not terribly challenging. When you're on a keyboard like I am, it's a bit harder than it needs to be because it's not as precise. And by the way, you can do this. It doesn't help you in any way. I don't think it's possible to get up any further. I've tried climbing this thing before. I don't remember if I ever succeeded. But whatever, it's pretty pointless to do that anyway. So this is King Blodizen. And he lost the priceless relic thingy. Who oh, knows? Okay. Basically, I'm not going to actually do this yet. I just wanted to get that door opened. Because I have my own plans for what to do in here. Hello, grass. That's going to be really annoying, isn't it? I can tell right now that's going to be two main problems with playing this game. is the dialogue that I'm not going to really want to cancel so people can read it, but I'm not going to be having anything to do while it's going on. And all the really long load times. Let's talk about warp pads again! Okay, whatever. So yeah, the levels in this game are rather huge. And so, warp pads are very, very helpful for getting around. That's a Globo, very pointless collectible in this game. Because in the Banjo-Kazooie, you have to collect Mumbo tokens and need a lot of them, and they're actually sometimes kind of hard to find. In this game, the Globos are almost always in very, very obvious locations, right next to Mumbo or Wumba. Kind of removes some of the challenge. That's one thing I can say that the first game did better. There's a couple things it did better. I mean, this one, the levels are huge enough to have a hundred separate notes scattered around, and instead they have far fewer than that. Not entirely sure why they did that. It makes it easier, which some would consider a good thing, but it also doesn't make very good use of the space. So yeah, I'm Mumbo now. That was one of the new, like, big selling points of this game as you can play as Mumbo. And you can split up Anjum Kazooie, but I can't do that yet. Is that the, yeah, that's the right Jinjo over there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that thing now, I guess. I've seemed to find this thing early on in the game more often than not. I think it is completely random, but I guess I'm just lucky that way. Yeah, go ahead and show this, why don't you? We didn't just watch this yesterday. Nope. Totally didn't watch this yesterday. Okay. So, the one Jinjo is reunited with himself. And he gives you the Jiggy. Not sure why he couldn't have just given it to you in person instead of flying back home and then somehow faxing it to you, but whatever. So back here's the treble clef. These things count as 20 notes, which is even more of an insult than the note nests. Uh, if you jump down here, if I can... Yeah. If you haven't seen a sign yet, jumping in front of this sign cancels out any damage you would get from falling. So that's the mumbo pad. You use it to do great mumbo magic. Hopefully I'll have enough time to do what I need to do with this thingy. This guy you just used to open up doors and stuff. He is large. He's very slow. I'm gonna cancel that. He just says, like, you can control it around, kick, and take it back to the stand to stop using it. But it's possible to get do everything that needs to be done with this thing in only one go, so I will try my very best to do that. Yeah, this thing is hella slow. I would speed up the game by uh, not limiting the frames per second. Just do that by pressing F4. But I'm afraid that that'll cause lag. 
right now, I, I know I'm getting into nobody cares territory here, but right now I'm running Audacity with Cam Studio, which is the setup I use to record Fire at Omega. And I'm doing that because I have a f it seems like it will be preventing audio desync. Because if I run just Cam Studio on its own, it tends to skip around a bit and then I have to edit it and it's just kind of a pain. I don't want to bother doing that. So anyway, I get that jig in and the last thing you can do is kick open this door here, which you don't have to do because you can break it open later with grenade eggs once you know how to use those. But since I'm here, I might as well do it. And that is it for the Golden Goliath. And that is also it for this segment, so... Next time, I'll just be exploring the level some more. Maybe going into some of those places I just opened up. I'll start out with Banjo and Kazooie already. You don't need to see me go back. <laughs>